again, I know he's been better than that to you guys. So can we give God a praise? Yeah. There you go. Praise the Lord. Have your seats if you can. So y'all notice I got this lapel on today. So that means I need to behave. Amen. So we're in, we're in, <laughs> we're in teaching mode. And uh, we want to stay on this thing called money. Right? Anybody need some money? Anybody need more money? Anybody need overflow of money? Okay, so we're going to talk. We've been talking. Hey, class, y'all all right? I've never been a teacher. I'm a, uh, I'm a crisis worker, so I'm the guy they call to snatch you up out of class. But I'm a teacher right now. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Amen. Listen, get your Bibles. Uh, we're going to go to 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 10 in the New Living. We've been talking about money. Uh, this month, you know, last week we talked about why give, right? Why give? And so Pastor did a great job of expressing why we give, why we do what we do as it pertains to money. Today we're talking about the love of money. The love, the love of money. Somebody say the love of money. The Bible declares in 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 10, I'm going to jump right in this. It says, for the love of money is the root of all kinds of evil. And some people craving money have wandered from the true faith and pierced themselves with many sorrows. For the love of what? Y'all say this like y'all a good class. For the love of what? Money. For the love of money is the root of all kinds of evil. Now, I didn't say uh, money is, but the love of money is. And I need to make this very clear because we're talking about money. And when we talk about money, people kind of tense up. I don't know why that is because if I need more money and somebody finna show me how to get more money, I'm going to be free. Right. Elbow your neighbor and say, don't be so tense. Be so tense. If you're writing notes, write this in your notes. God wants you to have money. God yeah, God wants you to have money. Write that down. He came that you may have life and that you may have it more abundantly. That, abundantly, that abundant life requires money. Okay. He just don't want you to fall in love with it. Okay. When it comes to uh, the love of, when it comes to the love of anything, it speaks in regards to having a strong devotion to. Means having major adoration or passion for. It's a strong desire of heart. The love of. And whenever you deal with love, you deal with matters of the heart. Okay. And when it comes to your money, you have to be careful how deeply in love you get with it. Say amen. amen. Can we go deeper? <clears throat> For the love of money speaks to relationship with, right? So the question is, what's your relationship with your money? Uh, uh, is your relationship uh, partnering with you and your money so you can do better? Or, or are you so in love with your money, everything in your life is dictated by your relationship with your money? Watch this. You can always tell how strong the relationship is based on the love expressed in the relationship, right? So uh, my wife is here, right? And I have a strong relationship with her. And the way that I express my love for her is, is very open. I ain't really got to say nothing because my action speaks for itself, right? Yeah. You understand? Huh? Huh? I could just look at her. Huh? Look at her. She grinning and all that. Huh? Huh? That, that's, that's, re <laughs> that, 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 that's relationship. You can always tell how strong the relationship is based on the love expressed in the relationship. So your actions will always tell you where your heart is. Right? Matthew 6 and 21. Get that. Matthew 6, 21. New living. Matthew 6 and 21. Your actions towards something would always tell you where your heart is. Matthew 6, 21. We can stand in New Living upper room. This is important because the Bible says, Whenever, wherever your treasure is, there the desires of your heart will be also. Yeah. Right? Where, wherever your treasures is, there your heart will be also. The love of money becomes a heart matter that's developed by having a wrong relationship with it. 
The love of money becomes a heart matter that's developed by having the wrong relationship with. Did you write that down? Okay. Make sure you wrote that down. The wrong relationship with money will affect the motives you have when it comes to money. If you're not careful, your money will become your ruler or your master. Right? We're going to set some people free today. Go to Luke chapter 16, verse 13 in the New King James Version. You got to be careful about this money because if your motives become all about money and if you're not careful, your money will become your ruler or your master. Luke 16, verse 13. No servant can serve two masters. For either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will be loyal to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. Somebody say mammon. Mammon. If you look at this in the New Living Translation, it says, no one can serve two masters, for you will hate one and love the other. You will be devoted to one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and be enslaved to money. Cannot be enslaved to money. Let's break this scripture down. Go, go back to the New King James Version. I want y'all to see this. And, and, and now, uh, uh, this is a different type of style of preaching for me. So I won't be like exegy in the text. You know what exegy means? No? Okay. Exegy is when you get the text and you pull out all of the spiritual truths out of the text. You bleed the text. That's, that's school and stuff. Okay. So, so we're going to go script, script by script in the text. Okay. The first thing this text says, you cannot serve Two masters, right? You cannot serve two masters. What is a master? A master is a person with the ability or power to use, control, dispose of. A master is the chief, the boss, the controller, the one in authority. That's a master. You can't serve two of them. You got to pick one, okay? Then he says, for either you will hate the one and love the other, or else... Uh, or else he will be loyal to one and despise the other. You cannot follow, write this in your notes, you cannot follow the prompting of God and the prompting of money. You're going to have to make a choice. Then he makes it clear at the end of the text, and he says, you cannot serve God and mammon. Are y'all with me? Nod your head, say amen, say okay, okay. All right. Mammon, what, what is mammon? Mammon, write this down is the influence of the world system as it relates to financial matters. It's a spirit. The influence of the world system as it relates to financial matters. It's the spirit of the world. The world's system, if you're not familiar with it, it really resolves around money. Okay? Real quick on systems. Everything runs by a system, right? Governmental system, uh, your body got a system, your neurological system, your, your blood got a system, your school got a system. Everything has a system. The world system is not really uh, 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 applicable to us because we're not from here. Okay? Let, let me help you. Once you got saved, uh, you get diplomatic immunity from this world because you are now a kingdom citizen. And so everything that works in the world system don't apply to me like poverty. That don't apply to me because I'm not from this system. And so when you understand that mammon is that system that tries to keep you from getting what kingdom benefits are, you'll understand that you need to stay away from them. Say amen to that. The world system revolves around money. It's lust. It's strife. It's envy, manipulation. It's grinding. Right? Uh, I watched a movie. I know this is a comedy, but I find revelation out of anything. One of my favorite movies is Trading Places. <laughs> and, 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 and at the end, these guys were so motivated by mammon, they were stepping all on top of each other and, and kicking each other. People in there having heart attacks and brain aneurysms because you're trying to come up. And if you're not careful, that spirit of mammon will get on you and you'll be so busy trying to come up that you'll miss what God is trying to do in your life. Right? Mammon. Mammon. Mammon is deceitful riches. It's being cunning. It's dishonest. It's lying. It's compromising. You know, in corporate, they they real backstabby. Huh? Can I say this line? Okay. Anybody corporate? (laughs) So y'all already know what I'm finna say. Uh-huh. They smile in your face, and then it's... 
Huh? Say amen. That, that's the spirit of mammon. Watch this. Mammon says, we don't need God because I got money. Mammon uh, will say, uh, will keep you chasing money until you made money your God. Mom, mammon is the wrong attachment to money. Please understand, mammon is not just money. It can show up in, in many ways, envious of others' wealth, anxiety over unmet needs, disobeying God's directives regarding money, failure to trust God concerning money. It's bad thinking about money. Mammon wants to keep you bound by his way of thinking, right? So you, the way you think about money makes a difference because mammon seeks to do this. If you write and take this down, mammon comes to take us from God's way and leave us alone depending on the world's way. Mammon, ma mammon comes to pull us away from God's set plan in our lives. Uh, mammon comes to, to steal the peace of God, keeps us fleshly minded. We're carnal minded. We're always thinking of ways to come up. You always got a scheme. Ain't nothing worse than a cat that always got a scheme. You always selling something. You got a noonie juice and you're selling pills and, and you got, got, got pyramid schemes. And if you buy this, then you work for me and we could come up together. Come on, man. That's mammon. You're not finna tell me. I'm gonna get in trouble for this. Y'all email me. Inbox my, in, put me, go in my inbox. I ain't no punk. You can't tell me that you finna help me come up by sitting me in a room full of broke people trying to get a scheme so we can all come up, but at the end of the day, there's only one person coming up, and that's the one. I don't want to be a part of no scheme where you riding slick and everybody on the grind. Listen, man, everybody can't sell light bulbs, you know what I'm saying? So you the one. <laughs> okay. Somebody say mammon. Mammon, mammon, <laughs> mammon comes to steal your contentment. It puts you in a place where you're never satisfied. You got the money, but you still got to have more. Like, how many pairs of shoes you really can have in your closet? burgundy shirts you gonna have <laughs> you got 18 burgundy shirts and you just now nah, I ain't getting rid of my shirts because they're my shirts I mean, I that's mammy I'm sorry what, what you're supposed to do with it is you're supposed to sow it uh oh I should that ain't even in my notes when, when, when God gives you so much of something you gotta sow it to make room for what's coming but when you have a spirit of mammon you, you have, you have this, this thing, you're a spiritual hoarder. I, not my shoes. I, I know I ain't worn them in five years, but then my shoes. You ain't got mammon. Uh-uh. Uh-oh, I better not. I, bet. I ain't giving away my dress because when I lose this weight, I'm going to put that dress back on. Look, look. Mammon. <laughs> uh, no, wait, I got one more. I got one more. You know these are my favorite slacks now. When I, when I knock off these 15 pounds, I'm going to be able to fit my slacks again. No, no, doc. Get Mammon, get them, get them slacks away. You ain't getting in them. You've upgraded. <laughs> so, sometimes you just got to face the fact I've upgraded. I ain't in 32s no more. I'm in 38. Okay. Mammon, mammon will keep you, uh, steal your contentment and you're never satisfied. It, it'll have you compromise. Watch this. Mammon will have you compromise and do whatever you got to do to make that money. You, you, you spend it more than your portion. You trying to keep up with the Joneses or keep up with Facebook, that's mammon. Because everybody on Facebook that's posting pictures out of town ain't happy out of town. 
But when you see it, you say stuff, ma'am, and I have you saying stuff like, ooh, we need to just, you know what I'm saying, don't pay the mortgage this month. Let's just go to Vegas. Because what happens in Vegas, <laughs> y'all, y'all got that? How old are you? 14, don't, don't even think about Vegas. Get it out, scratch that out your notes. Okay. Mammy, somebody say mammy. Mammy. Mammy makes you think money is your only hope. I can't, I can't, I can't get it until I get this money. Because I'm, I'm depending on this money. I can't, I can't, I can't go out there until I get this money. It'll have you focus more on the money and not God. They have you chasing money, chasing that dough, that guac, that bread, chasing the bags. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Chasing more money for those of you that have no idea what guap is. Amen. You, you chasing bags. Come here, bring me them bags. Uh huh. You, you, mammy, put that red one right there. Put that fancy one right here. Hey, man, there's stuff in that bag. You got to turn that bag. Okay. Yeah, there you go. Put that right there. It'll have you put it over there by the speaker. Mammy, this is a nice bag, and this is my wife's bag. You better get out of here, boy. And get me killed. Okay, M- Mammy will have you chasing money, right? Come here, Floyds. Yes. I want you, come move this. Y'all, y'all wasting up my time. Move this right quick. Yeah. I need you to come be God. Come on, God. Somebody say, hey, God. Hey, God. That's a nice scarf you got on, Lord. <laughs> Turn around. Stay, stay right here. This is God. All right? Wave at the people, God. Come here. This is my, that's a nice shirt now. Stay right here. Not too close because y'all married. Okay. <laughs> Mammy, what have you, because you know when you first start off, nobody uh, have intentions on being led by Mammy. Like you don't wake up and say, I'm just going to chase money. That's, that's, that's a process. And so you start off, and y- your money is looking good, but right behind your money, matter of fact, switch places. Yeah, there you go. You, you start off, and you save, oh, God, you're the supplier of my needs, oh, my God, right? Y'all act like, you're like, oh, God, in him I live, move, and have my being, Father, right? Your, your, your eyes... It's focused on God. And what happens is, Brenda, come on around, just slow. You start making a little more money. And stop. After you've made enough money, you put your money parallel or germane with God. So, 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 it's, it's, somebody say process. So it don't always start off with just focusing on money. You come up a little bit. You know how you pray and ask God to, to, to bless you with a job and you get a little raise and then you stop coming to church? Oh, I'm tired. I worked all night. This is the job you asked for, sugar. So, you can't. so now money and God parallel. So, you know, you keep working. You keep working. Come on up. Yeah. And now step back, God, because I got this money. Stop right there. And so you know, uh, play, play my song for me. The, 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 for Yo, this is Queen Latifah, bringing a song to you about a place you, you might know. know. What <laughs> you know what happened? You know what happened? In case you, you don't understand, money, right? it's called Everything Jackson. Changed. Hey, hey. In case you still hey, don't understand, hey. I brought along a virgin truth to kick the ballistics. Stop. So, so now, 
Mammon will have you focus on the money and not God. And so what happens is now you got the bag. You secured that bag, you understand? You, you, you secured that bag, you understand? Y'all got to be from the street. Y'all got to understand. It's about that bag. And so now once you start getting the bag, the spirit of mammon will just overtake you. And so now your priority becomes the bag. And so now, come on around here. Everywhere you go, you got to get a bag. Uh-huh. Yeah. Come on down. That's a nice bag right there. It's up there. Right there. And so now what happens is the spirit of mammon will have you chasing bags, but you left God. But you got the bag. You, you, got, you do know money don't give you sleep. Just because just, just you got a big house don't mean you resting. Just because just you got, got, got money don't mean you got peace of mind. Because if you're chasing it, you always thinking about it. So you ain't sleep. You in the bed waking up. Oh, man, I got to get up and get this money. Okay. And so now God is giving direction. Go over there, God. So now God is moving. Stop right there. He's trying to get you to your wealthy place, but you can't go with him because you got these bags. And so God is saying, if, if you focus on me, I'm going to give you all the bags that you need. Because at the end of the day, if you stop chasing the bags and chase God, you'll get the bag. 13 minutes. And so now God is moving. Go back over there, God. And God is so gracious, he'll try to come get you. Stop right there. But because you see another bag, you don't see God, you go get the bag. And God like, what? <laughs> God looking at you like, you ain't making no, you ain't making. So here's, here's the spirit of mammon. So the spirit of mammon will have you with all the bags, you chasing this money, you getting this guap, this bread, you good. You understand? You get making this money. If y'all from the street, you got to say money a certain way. I'm making this money. If, 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 I, if, I was, if I was from the Bronx, I'd be like, I'm getting money, son. I'm making this money, son. What up, B? Uh, so, 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 so now, here's what, here's the purpose of mammon. Mammon only comes to keep you away from God. And there's some of y'all here now, you got plenty of money, but you ain't got God. And so, so, so this spirit of mammon will have you loaded up on the bags, but you have no God. And, and Puffy and Biggie said like this, more money, more pro. So now you got all these bags, but you can't even give me a hug. So it ain't just about the money. Now you can't even be in relationship with your family. Because it's about the money. Y'all better catch where I'm going here because some of y'all got plenty of money, but you ain't got no love. You can't even, hey, come on. You, you, you got that bag. And the spirit of mammon, thank you with all them bags. The spirit of mammon, y'all clap for the floors. Bring that Thank you, God. Did y'all see what I was trying to say? Okay. And so, where my iPad at? Y'all want me to preach off my, I could preach now off my dome now. Study to show thyself approved. Okay. My granddaddy taught me that scripture when I was two. So, 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 mammon will have you chasing money, chasing them bags. And there's people in the room right now you don't want to admit it until today. You've been chasing bags and not God. That's mammon. Now watch this. Mammon seeks to control your emotions as well. It will have your joy rising and falling based on your finances. Because you want to do everything. When, you, when mammon spirit has you, you want to go everywhere. You want to do everything. You cannot... 
that, that mammon spirit that had you at the car lot, knowing $600 is a lot for a car note. You really can't afford it, but you in a lot of time about, ooh, <laughs> the Lord make it rich. <laughs> Y'all know we can blame stuff on God. If God didn't want me to have a car, he wouldn't have had me at the car lot. How about God didn't send you to the lot? You sent yourself with mammon. <laughs> mammon will play on your emotions. Look at that guy. That's mammon. <laughs> look, look at him. Mammon. Mammon will have you, ha, ha, have you uh, lacking peace at your house because of money. Man, I got to pay this. I got to pay that. Oh, my God. They about to turn the lights off again. But I'm working two jobs. How can you work two jobs and they still turn the lights off? Mammon will have you spending your increase on stuff that's not necessary. Like, like, like rims and sounds. See, when I came up, we had rims. And, and this guy's right now that got rims, but you live in your mama's basement eating frosted flakes and watching SpongeBob. Get out your, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You, you, get, mammon. You're not finna have no $180 pair of jeans on and you won't help your mama out with the rent. That's mammon. And this generation is laced with mammon, laced with mammon. You ain't arrived unless you got some, be what's, what's the shoes, Balenciagos or Egos or... But what is it? Say it again. Balenciagos. Huh? Oh, you see that? I got a class full of young people up here, and they all know hey, Balenciagos. <laughs> That's mammon. Parents, can I help you? This ain't even in my notes. You're going to get this for free. Go home and denounce the spirit of mammon. Mammon, I have you shopping uh, Bloomingdale's and, and uh, Neiman Marcus and Nordstrom's and Von Ma. Huh? Huh? Von Ma. Lord and Taylor. I can't fit nothing in Lord and Taylor. They, I went in Lord and Taylor. I'm like, hey, let me get these slacks. Well, sorry, sir. You're going to have to go to Nordstrom's. We only go to a 38. So, you know, I wear 38 now, you understand? I... <laughs> Mammon will have you, oh, my God. We, we were in, in prayer, and, and, and Elder Foster was talking about this self-entitled generation. Let me tell you something. You can fall out in the flow and roll, roll them up, roll them up, throw them in the pan. I'm not getting them shoes. You can forget it. You, you all right with that? I, because, because. <laughs> Drew, <laughs> hey, Corey, did you see Amari? He like, hey, I ain't even asked for the shoes yet. Because you already know. Because I'm not finna get caught up in mammon and having you on some Yeezys and you ain't where you need to be in school. Watch this. Watch this. You bring me straight A's and the honor roll, then just maybe. Just, just, just maybe. Maybe. Okay, just maybe. Just maybe. Because I, I need you to I need you to get good work ethics. I need I need I need you to get good work ethics. You, you ain't finna be. See, he, he can wear my shoes now. And so I'm, I'm, I'm working godly principles. And so I have harvests. And so I sow and I get harvest. That's my harvest. <laughs> don't, don't put your feet in my harvest. <laughs> hey, Dad, these are some nice shoes. I like, hey, let me, okay, they nice. This is my harvest. 
you go work and get a job and save up your money and you work portion order and then you could get some harvest. The reason why we don't teach that at home is because the parents are operating in the mammon spirit. Y'all, I did better when I was talking about your kids, right? It ain't just the kids, it's some parents. You spending your light bill on your hair, ain't, okay. Okay, mammy, mammy. Mammy will cause you to make moves based on money alone. Every move you make got to be based on money, right? Uh, uh, Mammon drives you to think that your income defines you. Your income defines you or what you do defines you. I don't care if you're a doctor. I know some doctors that need doctors. You ever seen a psychiatrist that need a psychiatrist? You got plenty of money, boo, but we need to switch seats because what you're saying ain't right. Man, I had, so my mother passed, right, a few years ago. And so I felt like, you know, I need to go to counseling because I, PTSD was wearing me out. I couldn't believe it, right? Can I be honest? Transparent. I'm woe out. I'm about to be a Muslim and all of that because God took, I felt like God took my mama. I'm, I'm bothered. No, I'm bothered. So they say, well, you know what? You need to go talk to somebody. So I said, you know what? I'm going to go talk to somebody. The problem was, the person that I was talking to, I wasn't led by God to get them. So I get in there the first session. He says to me, uh, I think what you need to do is write your mom a letter and mail it to her. <laughs> so I... Wait, wait, listen. This session is $150 an hour. No, no, no. You gonna tell me something else other than write a letter. Does heaven have an address? That's what I asked. <laughs> I say, I say, I say, look, you want me? Let me let me get this clear, because I'm very emotional and I'm liable to slap you. <laughs> let me get this. You want me to write my mama a letter and mail it to her in heaven? What's the address? <laughs> so here's what I do. I say, thank you, sir, for your time. Get my things, and I'm leaving because you might need some. <laughs> you obviously operating in mammon because you're trying to get my 150. Oh, all right. Somebody say, everybody need help. Everybody need help. Mammon, this, this spirit of mammon, the love of money. Go to 1 Timothy 6 and 10. I got it. That's all I got? Y'all give me 10 minutes. Can I, can I get 10 minutes? I got the mic on. So I was taught in ministry, whoever has the mic has the juice. I need 10 minutes. Is that okay, Pastor Clyde? <laughs> but if it's only money these leaders are after, they'll self-destruct in no time. Lust for money brings trouble and nothing but trouble. I like the message Bible because they just going to tell you in the raw. Lust for money brings trouble and nothing but trouble. Going down that path, some lose their footing in the faith completely and live to regret it bitterly ever after because of the love of money the wrong attachment another translation said it's the root of all evil which means that it's 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 the lack of trust in god right mammon drives you to get your focus off what god can do and then put it on what you think you can make happen that's mammon too so for all of y'all that got this self-righteous i'm gonna do it myself spirit that, that's mammon. Because you're not chasing bags. You're, you're satisfying your own lust to be self-righteous. I got it. 
You ever heard somebody say that? I got it. I don't need God. I got it. That's man. Because at the end of the day, when you chase that type of stuff, you disconnect from God. So when you need grace, because mammon ain't going to give you grace. <laughs> mammon brings you trouble and nothing but trouble. Are you with me? Mammon will take your focus off God and it'll put it on what you can do. We don't, we don't, you start getting to that place where you don't expect God to move on your behalf. You start relying on your history and experience, and you oftentimes count God out. Have you, have you ever been in that place mentally where you're like, I just got to get it done? You ain't sought after God. You ain't got instructions. You ain't did none of that. All you know is I got to get it done. Got to make this money. Your focus is no longer on God. So write, write this down. Don't stay on the thing because of money. And don't start a thing for money. Some of y'all asking for God to move in, in, in your employment and God has a stable job for you, but because you feel like the dollar that I'm finna sacrifice is going to make me miss out on something, I sacrifice that dollar for peace. You do know people are committing suicide on their job because it's too much stress. That's not God. Get that little 50 cent up and go and get this other job that God got you. But when you focus on money, you won't even see that. There are benefits. This job is closer to the house. Yeah, it's 50 cent, but I can save that on gas. See, when you, when you operate in mammon, you don't see that. Now, I'm making $16. I need my whole $16. Well, $15.50 is cool because it's going to save you $25 a week in gas. You do the math. Nah, I need this money. They, get, they offer overtime. So you get the overtime, but you're no good to your family. Y'all ain't saying nothing in this, in this Lutheran church. Your wife is frustrated. You don't know it because you ain't never there. Because I got to get this money. They offer overtime tonight, babe. I'm going to get it. When's the last time you seen your wife, doc? Oh, she good. Yeah, after that, four, three, four months, how your wife doing? You know, I ain't even talked to her today. Dexter. No, I ain't going to say <laughs> you, you leave, you chasing this stuff. You leave your wife uncovered. Watch this. I got Bible. Adam did the same thing. He was so busy chasing what he was supposed to be doing. Instead of letting God do it, he left his wife uncovered. And here come the state. Hey, hey, you all right? Huh? Huh? You all right? Elbow your neighbor say, don't let mammon get you off focus. So, how, how do we get past this spirit of mammon? Please know the power of God is always available. Right? God is not just able, but he is willing to do for us exactly what he promised. Your love for God should always outweigh your love for money. Let that sit. Your love for God should always outweigh your love for money. Because once I get God, the money going to come. Right? Now, listen. I understand you. Let me, now, 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 let me help you. Sometimes it's all right to pick up a second job because Christmas is coming. You want everybody to be happy. That's cool. I'm not saying don't do that. You got to do what you got to do. I'm with it. But don't let that become your God. Work it seasonal. It's called a seasonal job, right? Work the season, get through Christmas without being in debt, and going back home to your family. You can't keep saying, I'm going to go three more months. I'm going to go three more months. It's called seasonal. So, se seasonal is for a season. So, three things. I'll give you three things or three points to keep you from having a mammon spirit. Go to Hebrews chapter 13, verse 5 and 6 in the New Living. Y'all all right? Yeah. I will let you play, Chris, but I think I want to hear the Love of Money song one more time. So. <laughs> I'm just, I'm just, Chris like, yeah, well, you know. <laughs> Hebrews 13, yeah, 5 and 6. Don't 
love money. You see that semicolon thing right there? That means you got to pause after you say that. Don't love money. Hold it. Get that. Right? Receive that. Be satisfied with what you have. For God has said, I will never fail you. I will never abandon you. Go to six. So we can say with confidence, the Lord is my helper. The Lord is my helper. The Lord is my helper. Not my grind is my helper. Not my guap, not my bread, not my dough, not my bags. The Lord is my helper, so I will have no fear. What can mere people do to me? Because a lot of people are only operating in this mammon spirit so they can look good in front of others. Three points. Y'all all right? Okay. Y'all good, class? Did I do too much moving as a teacher? Okay. All right. Because I ain't that type of teacher anyway. Three points. Based on Hebrews chapter 5, or 13, verse 5 and 6, here are your three points from heaven, keep you from having a mammon spirit. Number one, you have to reestablish your trust in God and his system. Reestablish your trust in God and his system. Some people are slipping into mammon because you don't trust God's system anymore. And so you need to reestablish your trust in in God. It's called a transfer. Take that mammon spirit, give it to God so God can give you faith. Got that? Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5 and 6. You ain't got to put it up. It says, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Do not depend on your own understanding. Seek his will in all you do and he will show you which path to take. Transfer or reestablish your trust in God and his system. Got it? Number two. Recognize your level of satisfaction. This is important. This is important. In, in, in my study time, the Lord really dealt with me on your level of satisfaction. Everybody look at me. You have to understand all of the stuff that you got, you really don't need to be satisfied. So you have to recognize your level of satisfaction. I was talking to my wife and I, I just kind of made this statement. I'm like, man, I'm, I'm getting to a place now where I'm comfortable with what I got, right? I don't need a whole lot of stuff. Y'all, y'all, y'all see me dressing and think I'm doing some stuff. I like sales. When, when, I, go, when I go to Nordstrom's or Nordstrom's Rack, I'm looking for the orange sign that say clearance. This is the will of God, you understand? Okay. Because I understand my level of satisfaction. You got to ask yourself, what do I really need to be happy? Do I need 50 pairs of shoes to be happy? <laughs> Y'all heard that? I hear the Lord saying, reduce. <laughs> We're going to go from 50 to 30. Let's start off slow, right? No, no. You got to really establish your level of satisfaction. What, what do you really need to be satisfied, right? Do, do you really, now, everybody wants, and we'll talk about this later on this month, everybody wants to be in a place where you are partnering with God financially so that you can get increased. Everybody wants that. But even with your increase, do you really need some of this stuff that you're buying and spending money on and, and chasing? Do you really need that to be satisfied? He, he says it. He, said, he says it right here. Don't love money. Be satisfied with what you have. Put Hebrews 13 verse 5 back up there. He says, don't love money. Be satisfied with what you have. For God has said, I would never fail you. I would never abandon you. And as long as you're satisfied with what you got and you got God, you got increase. And just because you got increase don't mean you got to spend your increase. That's another class. It's another class. So number one, reestablish your trust in God and his system. Number two, recognize your level of satisfaction. Number three, remember who's in control. Because once you make Jesus your Lord, because we like to skip Lord and just go straight to save. He died for me. Yeah, he died. But he now, he, now he has to become your Lord. 
which means whatever I need to do to put myself in a place of increase, I got to follow his lead. The problem with that illustration that I was showing, uh, uh, she was chasing the bags and wasn't following God. And God was taking her to every place that she needed to be to get increased. And so you got to make sure you understand who's in control. Get rid of this self-righteous spirit. Well, we say stuff like, I don't know, God. How you going to tell God what you going to do? He's the creator, right? He blew breath into you, and you're going to have a conversation with him talking about, I don't know, God. You need to recognize who's in control. Somebody say, God is in control, God is in control. Of, everything, of everything, including, including my, money. my money. Proverbs, this ain't, I ain't tell y'all this. Go to Proverbs chapter 3. Verse 7 through 10, and I'll close. You can play now. Ty, you got my song queued up or no? Okay, don't worry about it. We'll play it after church. <laughs> Amina, you like that song, don't you? Okay. Listen. Verse 7 through 10. It says, don't be impressed with your own wisdom. Instead, fear the Lord and turn away from evil or mammon. Then you will have healing for your body and strength for your bones. I didn't get a chance to get into how mammon will mess with your body. It, it, it'll, mess, it'll mess with your, your thinking and your bones and you got aching and pains and carrying on because you got this mammon. Go to verse 9. Honor the Lord with your wealth. Let that sit in. Honor the Lord with your wealth, which would suggest that I'm already supposed to be wealthy. And if I ain't got wealth now, it's coming because I'm supposed to honor the Lord with it. Y'all better catch this. And if he told me to honor him with wealth, he's obligated to give it to me so I can give it back. Okay. Honor the Lord with your wealth and with the best part of everything you produce. With everything, with the best part of everything you produce. I, 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 I like this, and I want you to really catch this. Honor the Lord with your wealth. This word honor means that I'm giving you back whatever it is that you need or is required of me. That's my act of honor. Don't be selfish and keep it all to yourself. God has a plan, not just for your life, but for your money. And so you got to honor the Lord with your wealth. And with the best part of everything you produce. Go to 10. Yeah. Then, so all service, y'all been kind of reserved. But after I read this, this one you can start getting excited, okay? Okay. Then, right, after you honor him with your wealth and you get rid of that mammoth spirit, then he will fill your barns with grain. Stop. Fill your barns with grain is equivalent to filling your banks with money. Now look, you ain't got to be excited because maybe you don't want no money. So, excuse me. Then he will fill your barns with grain. Woo! Thank you, Jesus. I got, I got money in the bank. <laughs> okay. Okay. And your vats will overflow with good wine. My wife, she, when I was reading this, she said, your vats, V-A-T-S. Vats, uh, back in the day, help me out, Elder Frosser. Those, those vats are about this big. Like you can almost look at them. And they filled with wine. And the more wine you have, the more it overflows. Wine represents liquid grace. I ain't got time. <laughs> I ain't got time. You like that, don't you? I ain't got, I ain't got time. I ain't got time. But when, but when you are honoring God with your wealth, he will fill your barns with grain and your vats will overflow with good wine. So, Father, I thank you now that you are completely, completely committed to our success. Financially, monies. Thank you, God, that you have set a path for us so that we can have an abundant life. Father, now we come against the spirit of mammon. That spirit that causes us to depend on the world system. We break it now in the name of Jesus. And we transfer our trust. 
We establish our level of satisfaction and we put you back in the seat of control. And we decree and declare that from this day on, mammon has no room in our lives. We are children of the most high God. And if my father is rich, I'm rich. And I want everything that you promised me. And I receive it now. I receive it now. I receive it now. I receive it now. In the name of Jesus, somebody open your mouth and shout. Y'all okay? Anybody feel better about the outlook on money now? All right. I, I had a lot more, but I had to cut it. Clap your hands for the word. Give me that card. Clap your hands for the word. Everybody standing. Everybody standing. Everybody standing. Oh, I ain't got to worry about loving that money because God is faithful to me and my family. And my family. So listen, if you are here, you don't know Christ, you want to be baptized into the family of Christ, you can prepare your hearts to come. Or if you're here and you say, man, I like this church, I need a covering, I need to be a part of this family, they're over here talking about money and stuff, I need to be a part of that. If that's you, do me a favor and wave your hand so I can see you. If you are here and you have not been baptized into the body of Christ, or you're here and you are not a partner, a member of this church, you don't have a covering, we want to be your covering today. Huh? Did y'all hear me? We want, we want to cover you. Lifeline, look down your row and see if there's anybody there down there that don't know Christ. Look at them. Say, you good? Talk to them. Say, you all right? You all right? There's always somebody here. So we'll try it again with a little bit more excitement. If you are here, and you don't know Christ and you want to be baptized into the family of Christ, why don't you come meet me down here on this altar? If that's you, come on. If that's you, come on. Or, or number two, if you say, I want to partner with this church, this church is the bomb, I like what they're doing and I want to be a partner, you can come. One of those two, come on. Come on, if you're here. Where you at? Where you at? On the balcony? Where you at? Look down your road one more time. We're not going to press. Just look down your road and say, is that you? I'll walk with you. Tell them, say, I'll walk with you. I'll walk with you. Go ahead. Take 30 seconds. You can talk in church now. Talk to them. You got 30 seconds. Make sure they all right. Tell them, say, you all right? I'll walk with you. T tell them this. Say, if you come up here, the church going to go crazy. Tell them, say, if you go up there, the church going to go crazy. Everybody good? Good. Clap your hands and give God praise. So look, look, if you are here for the first time, our first time guest, do me a favor. If you're a first time guest, follow this young lady over here with this sign. We're going to take you downstairs. We just want to love on you, get a little information from you. Is that all right? Lifeline, clap for our first time guest. Y'all follow her. Yeah. So look, before you leave, let's not forget that this Wednesday we are back in our Lifeline sessions. Say amen to that. Amen. This Wednesday we are back in our Lifeline sessions. So we're going to have our life sessions. I'm sorry. We're going to have uh, topics dealing with uh, dating with intent, forgiveness, answer to poverty, and an intro to Spanish. Crave will also be in, in, in their perspective place, so make sure you're here. The Season Saints, don't forget the Season Saints will be having a chili cook-off this Saturday at 10 a.m. Y'all clap for them. It, it'll be right here, uh, the main campus, Saturday at 10 a.m. Also, Married Life, our premarital classes, Lifeline Training Institute is happy to announce the return of our Married Life premarital classes. This class is for those that are engaged or seriously dating. It's a five-week course. It's going to start February 27 at 7 o'clock. The cost is only $50. Uh, $50. Register today at lifelinechicago.com. 
Also, don't forget about the Life Training Institute. Amen? Is that it? All hearts and minds. Here, Father, thank you so much for this time in your word, this fellowship, this worship. Thank you for just being who you are. We receive everything that was released. We receive everything that was released, and we anticipate manifestation of it. As we go our separate ways, cover us with your blood. Let us make it to our various destinations safe and sound. In Jesus' name, everybody say amen. amen. Hug a few people on your way out and tell them you love them. Thank you, class. Y'all did good. My man. Thank you, man. I appreciate you. That's TJ. Oh, okay. I forgot. Sorry.